Welcome back to my channel. The other day I posted a short about wedge brush leaves and I received a lot of questions about both the brush and how to achieve that variegated look. So today I'm going to recreate those for you so that we can talk through it together. So this is a wedge brush. This set of four is a 16, 10, 8, and 6. I got mine from um, an Etsy shop, Fox and Quills, but I noticed that they don't have them right now. But this set looks exactly the same. I don't know that they're the same, but it looks exactly the same as the one that I will link below on Amazon. Um, I believe that manufacturer is Bestie. Um, and that one comes with a DVD. Mine did not come with a DVD. Anyway, uh, the wedge brushes are just that. They're like this triangle. It has three edges. One there, one there, and one here. And it makes this very nice point. So I just wanted to show you that real quick before we get started. And a lot of people have also asked me about this tray. This brush tray was made for me by my um, sister-in-law who does a lot of pottery. And I wish she had an Etsy shop or something, but she doesn't. But if she ever does, then I will let you know about that too. Okay, I'm going to use the larger wedge brush just so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. So I want to place the first color along this shorter side of the wedge. So we'll just get a good, good bit. I don't want it dripping, but I do want a good amount on there. And then take it off the tip. We don't want it on the tip. Put the tip in second color. And again, we don't want it dripping. So I might wipe that a little bit. Let's do a stem. Okay, there's a stem for us to follow. So now I probably need to reload that. Okay. So I'm going to use that tip to drag out from the stem and then I want to smush the whole thing onto the paper and just bend it. And I like to come around a little bit so you can see the underside of the leaf here. And you see the darker that was on the tip made that and the lighter on the belly made that. And you'll need to clean your brush well, you don't have to clean it, but you do have to reload it every time to get a good result like that. So we'll put that lighter color here, take it off the tip, put the darker color on the tip, and you can do it the reverse. You can do the darker color on the main leaf and the lighter color on the tip. It doesn't matter. Now, again, I'm going to drag out from the stem, push the whole thing to the paper, and just swish it. And you certainly don't have to come back around on this side. I just like the way that looks. So let's do it again. Let's do it, but let's push it the other way. So we're gonna drag it out, push it this way, and come around. You can, oops, a little too much. So we just wanna work our way up the stem to make this flowy limb. Let's do a couple more. Drag it out a little bit, smoosh it, and swish it in either direction, doesn't matter. Now let's do this one. And I did not dip as much into the darker. So as you can see, we've got a lot of variation depending on how much you dip into that second color. Now we can do it a little shorter. All right, let's go to the smaller, the eight. My numbers came off actually. I think this is the eight. 
I'll show you a couple of the different other different things that you can do with this brush and with the variegated method. It's also called uh, double loading your brush. So we're going to get that first color and then dip the tip. Let's do a palm leaf. This time we're not going to swish. We're going to go straight. So I'm going to put the tip down, then smush the whole thing and drag it up. And as I drag up, I'm lifting the brush. I'm lifting the brush this way. So I'm double loading again and I want to put the tip where I want it to be, smush it down, drag it up and out, lifting the brush. And as you see, I had a whole lot of that dark on there. And I'm sorry if you can hear the hammering next door. All right, let's try it again. Place your tip down, smush the whole belly of the brush down, drag it up, lifting as you go. Let's just finish this palm leaf out. And I love how each leaf is a little different because that's how it would be in real life. Let's do one more on each side. Now I'm not going to double dip it this time just so we can see the difference. And let's just make our stem. All right. Now let's do a flower. I'll show you how to double load for a flower and the kind of flowers that you can do with this brush. There are so many uses for this brush. I'll just go over a few of them today. I want to do a yellow flower didn't have very much water in that pan. Okay, so now I have loaded that. Let's take it off the tip as much as we can and dip it into the orange. Now with the flower, I'm going to wiggle it to make the petals, keeping the tip in relatively close proximity to where I place it. So I'm going to place it down and let's wiggle it. And I'm going to wiggle it this way and I'm going to wiggle it that way. And I'm going to reload again, yellow and orange. And let's do another petal. Place it down. We can wiggle it that way. And let's do it one more time. Double loading again. I might need to turn my paper a little bit. Place it down and wiggle it that way. And you can come back on top if you want to. Just make this a, ooh, I like that. I don't wanna mess with that anymore. You can actually, you can do it three times, let them completely dry, and then come back and do it again on top of them if you want that look. So many different things to do. Okay, let's add some green. And we can make some little leaves. We can make a, a straight leaf. I didn't have very much on my brush that time. Or you can make a leaf like that. You can just play with it, make the kind of leaves you want to make. You can add a little darkness under there. Oh, another thing I like to do with this brush, let's go back to the large brush. You can make a vase.
there's just so much you can do. Let's go. So I've loaded it one color on the whole brush and I'm just going to smoosh it down and drag it. And if you want to, you can kind of play with that a little bit. Fine tune the bottom if you want. So those are just a few examples of how and when to use double loading and the wedge brush. This probably goes without saying, but you can use this technique of double loading with any paintbrush, of course. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any more questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below and give this a thumbs up to let me know if this was helpful for you. And please subscribe if you haven't already for more videos coming up soon.